What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Coach Steve Show podcast. Today, we're going to dive into my Illinois Final Line I 2021, the 2021 22 season. Was it a success? Was it a failure? How did it go under first year head coach Brent Bielma, who came from the New York Giants, had different coaching stops along the way leading up to Illinois? We're going to discuss all of that and the surprise to me of uh, firing Tony Peterson and hiring a new offensive coordinator only after one year together, he is gone. We're going to discuss all of that today on the Coach Steve Show podcast. First, before we talk anything about that, please make sure you're hitting the like button and the subscribe button on the YouTube channel. Please and thank you. I'm trying to grow this into something and I can't do it without people helping me get the word out there. Uh, you know, the bigger this gets, the more of the things I can do. So please hit the like button. It helps the algorithm and the subscribe button. Wherever you listen to your podcast, it can be found literally anywhere. Just make sure you're following it, rate, rate it, be a friend, tell a friend. Uh, if you like it, if you don't like it, then we can pretend it never happened at all. Uh, you can also find the podcast on ColorCast. ColorCast is a commentary sports app where you can go on and commentate sports you can do if you have your own podcast you can go down there and do live podcasts you could do uh hot takes anything like that currently i am live on youtube and live on colorcast as this podcast is. if you listen to the audio version it's already come and gone but uh you know we're live we are live everywhere so go do that I even like the facebook page coach steve show facebook page go do that for me please and thank you uh podcast is also brought to you by the Belly Up Sports Podcast Network. If you go to bellyupsports.com and check out all the uh, podcasts there and everything, uh, there's tons of podcasts, tons of blogs. Uh, it's going to be the Belly Up Sports Media Network here as it moves along. Uh, it started off as a sports thing, but now we're, they're moving up and doing way more other things. Uh, so go check out all that bellyupsports.com. And all you football coaches out there for your linemen and the and, and seasons leading up, you know we're in the offseason. Did their helmets get scuffed up during inside run period? Uh, I, I'm sure they did. Uh, if so, there's a way to protect the shells and reduce the repetitive blows your guys are taking each and every day and each and every week. It's guardian caps. Guardian caps can reduce 20 to 33% of the impact. It really focuses on the big guy in the trenches and can't win without the big guys in the trenches. Come on now. You know that. It is worn by five NFL teams and 200 plus colleges like Alabama, Georgia, who just won the national title, Oklahoma, Washington, and Penn State. Check them out at guardiansports.com slash guardian dash caps. If you go to that website, use the link in the description below. Use the code 15 off. It is good for 15% off your order at Guardian Caps. Again, guardiansports.com slash guardian dash caps. 15 off. You get 15% off your order. You'd be crazy to not do that, football coaches to cover up your helmet, help protect the guys and whatever blows they take. Not saying they leave with their head, but you just never know. Go do that for me. Home Sports Podcast. Again, guardiansports.com slash guardian dash caps. Code 15 off, 15% off your order. Go do that. And are you looking for a clean nutritional energy drink uh, to help you get through a part of your day? You had a bad night of sleep, you need something to wake you up. You're going to have that midday tiredness that we all get. And you need something to help wake you up. I've got something for you. If you go to swiftlifestyles.com, it's just that it comes in a tub like pre-workout because you can use it as pre-workout. That's the key. has 30 servings in it. The bubblegum flavor is probably the best. It uh, has 30 servings in it. If you need a shaker cup, they sell the shaker cup on there as well. So if you go to swiftlifestyles.com, use the code Coach Steve Show, all one word, you are going to save 15% off your order. It helps support the show, helps sports, you know, again, to grow this, uh, to get bigger. Uh, please. And thank you. Um, I appreciate all of that. Uh, thank you guys so much. All right. Enough of, you know, the housekeeping items. Um, we are going to dive into the episode. So Illinois, you know, they've wrapped up their season. It's been a while since they've wrapped up their season. Um, but you know, we were going to talk about other things were happening. Um, I, 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 was going to wait to talk about that. Kind of wanted to see if there's any big time recruits. They did get some recruits. Um, and then there was the talk about them possibly playing in a bowl game. Um, so they ended their season. It was uh, Coach Brent Bielema's first year as the head coach of the Illinois Fighting Illini. He came from the New York Giants and he's had a couple of stops along the way. 
Uh, he was with the New England Patriots before that. He was the head coach of Arkansas for a few years, and he was the head coach at Wisconsin. He played at Iowa, was an assistant coach at Iowa, um, all that stuff. So he's had some coaching experience. Uh, he came in, you know, taken over for Lovey Smith, whose tenure was not the best. His tenure was more about trying to put Illinois back together, uh, to try to put the glue back together because I, uh, you know, the previous coach, which I probably shouldn't talk about as much, you know, the allegations that were, you know, stowed upon him uh, or that he did to Illinois. Um, it was, you know, it was a lot. It was a lot uh, that he had to overcome, you know, Lovey Smith. You know, he was with the Bears and he was the head coach um, of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Did not go well. Um so he had a lot to deal with, but Illinois was in a bad spot. And then it just kind of got better and then kind of didn't. It kind of spiraled down, only made it to one bowl game in the five years. Uh, the Red Box Bowl did it the year before COVID. And, uh, yeah, it just didn't end well. So Coach Bielma comes in and knows he has to build a foundation, knows he has to um, try to build up this program. And he's from Illinois, he's from Prophetstown, Illinois. Played high school football in Illinois. Apparently, he always wanted to go to the U of I, but he ended up going to Iowa, getting recruited there. It's close to the Iowa border, so no shocker there. So it comes in very first year. Um, let's talk about Illinois. Uh, we'll look at their schedule. They ended up going five and seven. They were fifth in the Big Ten West. Um, maybe we can even look ahead to their schedule going next year. Um, they start off week zero versus Nebraska and got that big win. His very first win is Illinois. You know, they won 30 to 22. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Then they play UTSA, which we'll get to the UTSA connection here in a couple minutes. You know, they lose a close one, 37 to 30 and dealt with quarterback play, you know, in that very first game, Brandon Peters gets hurt. So Tatowski has to come in. Um, and then he has to, you know, continues to start. Um, they go on a four-game losing streak, losing to UTSA, losing to Virginia, close one to Maryland, close one to Purdue, and they're games that Illinois should have and could have won some of these. Virginia had a high-powered offense. But I believe it was a Virginia game where you start to see Illinois' defense really take a turn to get better. And then we get a win versus Charlotte, but it was a close game. Lose to Wisconsin. The score, I don't think, shows how close the game kind of was, how hard-hitting it was, and how close Illinois was. And then, you know, the classic, instant classic Penn State that took nine overtimes, lose a close one to Rutgers, win a close one against Minnesota, lose a 10-pointer to Iowa, and then have a big one to finish out the year of versus Northwestern. And then when a couple bowl games were happening and teams were, you know, canceling due to COVID, um, they had originally asked Rutgers to play in a bowl game, and Brad Bielema wasted no time because Rutgers was like on the fence about playing. Wasted no time, and he tweeted, "He's like waiting by the phone." He got, he was like, "I want to play." So my impression, you know, of the five and seven year, I was, I knew the season could go either way. I was on a podcast and said, you know, Illinois could get to the six to eight win mark. Um, talking to Coach West, who I know, if you guys listen to this podcast at all way back when we used to do podcasts, me, him and Brad, but even Nathan, we talked if they play up to their potential and everything can work out. He saw, you know, an eight to 10 win season, which me personally, that was a lot. Now I'm not talking bad about Brad Bielema. I'm not talking whatever. It was just their schedule uh, coming in with a new offense, a new defense, you know, a new regime, a new culture, Everything being new, I don't think any old coach, maybe a couple old coaches were retained, but not like major. And so when you look at the schedule, five and seven to me is not a failure from where we were. You know, we only won two games a year before then you win the six, but you, we were always winning two to four games. So to win five to some teams is an absolute failure. It's an absolute embarrassment. What we saw at overall, and this, again, I apologize, this might go a little all over the place because that's how my brain works. It's scattered. Even if I have you guys that do podcasts, if you have a structure, you're going to go. But we're going to look at the overall picture, and then we'll look at little things. The overall picture, I don't see this season as a failure. 
maybe some Illinois fans look at it that way because, you know, when originally, you know, you're looking at, well, UTSA is a smaller school and should have beat them. But UTSA, I think they only lost a game this year. There's a reason, you know, they had good players and good coaches. Virginia won a high power, highest high powered offense in the country. And you we were having inconsistent quarterback play and the offense was being inconsistent. Um, then now the Purdue one's a little disappointing. Should have won that one. The Purdue Purdue had a really good season and it was 13 to nine. So a really good year. You no know, Purdue beats Tennessee in the bowl game. So 13 to nine. I mean, yeah, we should have won. It's a little disappointing, but you got to look at it from that perspective. And then we beat Charlotte. The Wisconsin game was 24, nothing, but I think it was closer, really closer than that. I know Wisconsin ran the ball over the place, but realistically you hold a Wisconsin team to 24 points you're putting yourself in a spot if you score a couple of times, it's a closer game. Penn State, the nine overtime, 20 to 18 win. Then the Rutgers one was disappointing. I watched that game, but Rutgers was not the same. Then you go to Minnesota, lose a 10 pointer to Iowa, which Brent Bielma really wanted to win that one. I mean, he went to Iowa. Then you blow out your rival of Northwestern. So to me, this is not a failure. Now, probably should have won the Maryland game, probably should have, could have won the Purdue game and the Rutgers game. Okay, so right there's three wins, and then we get to eight wins, and now we're playing in a bowl game. It's a huge success, but also I'm actually – I would rather see them win, go to eight wins, but I, that's why I waited a little bit after the season was over for this reason. I've talked about the Bears for a long time, and anybody that follows the podcast, I appreciate you, but if you listened, the Bears, the worst thing that could have happened to Matt Nagy and those Bears was the 2018 season, which I be, that's been a dead horse. So if you go eight or nine wins this year – then next year we go five wins, and then it goes five wins again or six wins. Now we're looking at failures. So outside looking in, yes, I will take them winning six to nine wins, getting six to nine wins over anything, and I'm sure Coach Bielma on that staff, absolutely. But from a fan perspective, the outside looking in, I have to look at it as we don't want this huge, 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 huge success win column-wise the first year because then the expectations even go higher. Now, can Brett Bielma handle those expectations? Absolutely. I mean – Nick Saban talked about how good of a coach he was when he had to go against him at Arkansas. We saw what he did with Wisconsin. I mean, he was high. I mean, for Bill Belichick to bring Bill Belichick doesn't just bring people on. He had to really prove himself. So to be a part of that is awesome. So he has to know a little something. And I'm just fired up when he talks. He's so about Illinois. He's very bought in. He's very, you know, it's just all it's all good. Um so I don't look at it as a failure. Yes, I would want to see more wins. And the reason why I say it's not a failure is there's inconsistencies of it. You know, there was inconsistency on offense. Now, the defense played a lot better. Sometimes they gave up, point, you know, some big plays. But they played a lot better. That's why Coach Walters got the contract extension. That's why he was up for, you know, coaching awards, assistant coaching awards, and coordinator awards going from the beginning of the year and, you know, they just changed it up. You know, they wanted to play a lot of man stuff and they kind of realized, hey, you know, they've played this zone stuff for a while. Why can't we incorporate that? So they would they were able to switch back and forth. Uh, they were able to do that. They kind of, again, Brad Bielma said from the very beginning, they're going to tweak. They're going to do what the players can do and not force it. It kind of looked like they forced a little bit on defense. They kind of went back to, okay, this is what they can do. Let's focus on it. Let's incorporate what we want to do into what they can do. And he did that, and it worked out great. That's why the defense played a lot better. And so overall, um, not a bad year. We can, and, and a reason why I say it's not a bad year or a failure is because you have to look at it. Are we seeing improvements? Now, there was some inconsistencies, but are we seeing consistency on defense? Absolutely, we were. Sometimes they were just on the field too much. Uh, overall, defense played better. A big thing for Illinois was the offense. That offense went through so many changes under the Lovey Smith era. You know, being a fan of watching them, you know, when he first got there, he hired all these NFL guys and they were running an NFL style offense. Well, then he kind of realized, well, wait a minute, maybe this doesn't work here in Illinois. Maybe it doesn't work with the players we have. So they switched in. They went to like a full on like spread option thing. Well, then it switched to let's run a spread where we're going to run bubble screens and, and just zone and nothing else. So they've made all these overhauls. They had so many offensive coordinators come through. And so to come in, that inconsistent quarterback play. You know, Brandon Peters was not the guy. There was times he did really good, but it was just inconsistent. Statowski could throw the ball, but here was times he just overthrew people. Uh, wasn't accurate. You know, he's a gunslinger, but there's a difference between between 
being a Brett Favre, Jake Cutler gunslinger, where 90% of the time it's getting there, 95% of the time it's getting there, but you're going to have an interception or two here. It's not like that Satowski was throwing it, he's trying to be a gunslinger, and it was, well, who it's going over the top, or who uh, maybe 50% of the time it's going to get there. And then on top of the quarterback play, the offensive line, people got on the offensive line a lot. I thought that was one of the strengths. Yes, there was times where it was consistent, but you have to understand there wasn't a lot of offensive linemen on the team. And then when you stack the box, so we have good running backs, but when, you, when a team realizes, well, we're going to only run the ball, that's what they're good at, they're going to stack the box. Then you got tight ends and are blocking consistently. That's going to be a problem. So when you've got seven or eight guys in the freaking box, it's hard on those offensive linemen. Even if you put a tight end there, because we, we really predicate on inside zone and wide zone and pin and pull. Once in a while, you saw a GT. Once in a while, you saw a trap. Once in a while, you saw power. But it just looked like a lot of zone stuff, a lot of dive stuff, a lot of downhill stuff, which is fine. But then when you're putting eight guys in the box, they don't may not even go to where the tight end is. They're going to go right up the middle. You know, they're going to send a guy to the cutback because that's where the yards come from on zone plays. People don't know that. You know, a lot of times it's on cutbacks. It's not necessarily where it's going to hit. If you call zone to the right and he's aiming for the outside leg of the guard and he's going to drive on the inside, like, well, that's a cutback. He's going that way. Now he could go forward and sometimes get big plays, but majority of it's going to be the cutback. I don't know if people realize that. Even on wide zone, wide zone, they're aiming for where the tight end would line up, reading, you know, that the first defensive end to the back, def the second defensive end, and looking to make the cutback. If they can keep going forward, great. But on that fifth step, like you've we've all seen as coaches, boom, it's going to cut it back. So that's what they're looking at. And so people were blaming the offensive line for everything. Well, what about when a receiver drops a ball? What if the quarterback overthrows it? Who's, whose fault's that? You can't run the ball every single play, which I know the wing T guys and the triple option guys, yes, you can. Whatever. I'm talking about Illinois' offense and who they're going against. You cannot run it every single time. Don't blame the offensive lineman for that. Blame the quarterbacks on some things. Blame the running backs sometimes for not reading it right. And then just, we didn't have a playmaker. You know, Williams, you know, did what he could. That was our guy. But when you only got one guy, they're going to look at him. Uh, no offense to him. It's third and 10. You're going to throw the ball up to him. Is he going to out jump a guy, a corner that's taller than him and a safety? No, we didn't have a go-to guy consistently. And that's the problem on the offense. So recruiting-wise, they're going to have to reload the offensive line. They need a quarterback. They got the, the transfer from Syracuse, which hopefully will transfer well from the type of offense he played with Dino Babers. You've got to get some receivers. The running backs, I think, will be okay, but you've got to re reload on the offensive line. We've got to get guys, go-to guys for the wide receivers, and we got to get a quarterback. That That is really what we have to do. And then, yeah, we went tight a lot. We went the barge. You know, every single offensive lineman was out there, and that's great. And Brad Bielan wants to run the ball, but he also understands we've got to be able to make some pass plays. We've got to be able to throw the ball because of the teams that we are playing. Because if you look at their schedule next year, now they have Wyoming, which they could win. That's, you know, Coach Coach Miller, the offensive line coach, he was coaching there before. Uh, then they go to Indiana, which is going to be, um, you know, a toss-up because Indiana had a down year, but Coach Allen's a good coach, so we'll see about that. Then you got to play Virginia again, who, you know, had your number. Chattanooga, you should be able to beat. Wisconsin played a lot better. That's going to be a tough game. Iowa's always tough. Minnesota's a tough one because P.J. Fleck does a great job getting those guys to play. It's just recruiting, but he gets them to play. Nebraska is still probably in a downhill swirl, but they play them way later on in the year where they might have it figured out. Michigan State's on the up and up. Purdue's on the up and up. Depends what happens with Jim Harbaugh in Michigan and Northwestern. So the schedule next year, a little bit favorable. Um, it just start, it starts off a little bit favorable for Illinois, but then it just gets rough. That is a meat grinder. Wisconsin, Iowa, Minnesota, Nebraska, Michigan State, Purdue, Michigan, and Northwestern. It, this is a meat grinder of a schedule for next year for Illinois. So they've got to reload the offensive line. The quarterback play is what killed me. That the, the inconsistent quarterback play was just god awful, just super, super bad. No, I mean, times they look good, and a lot of times they did not look good at all. But they got to have a quarterback. They have, a, have to have a guy to throw to, and they got to reload the offensive line. Defense, I think they're good. I mean, you had great safety play. Uh, the defensive line played a lot better. They got hands-on. They were able to drive people back. The linebackers played well. Um, 
So there, I mean, you just have to keep reloading. Coach Walter was able to adapt to what they can do, have this whole system, and you saw it. There was times where they lined up in a 4-2-5 look or 4-3 look, and then all of a sudden they're in a 3-4 look, which is what Coach Bielma wants to do. But Coach Walters ran a 4-2-5 when he was at Missouri in the SEC. So he, the way he and Coach uh, Bielma really worked together to incorporate the 3-4 and the 4-2-5, because essentially they run a lot of the similar things, was fantastic. So they're giving teams different looks. And when they get the linemen to run a 3-4 where they can control the line of scrimmage, that's going to be great. So I think defensively they'll be fine. They just got to continue to carry over. It's the offense that you know is going to struggle. And that's why if you look at some of the stats, um, if you go to the, you know, their look over all their stats, um, Illinois, I mean, points per game. This seems pretty high. They average 20. 0.17 points. That seems pretty high. Now, anybody out there that ever listens to me or looks, Illinois is very similar to the Chicago Bears. I mean, you have a defense that really helps carries the team, and then you just have inconsistent quarterback play. You have inconsistent offensive play, and the numbers look very similar. I mean, points per game was 20, and then we're giving up 21. So defense is putting us in a spot, but we're just not scoring. Um you know, we only had we had two thousand three hundred forty three rush yards, which is good, uh, but passing, uh, I mean, not good. Uh, but one thousand eight hundred seventy four passing yards out of two or three quarterbacks, that's not good. That's not good at all. The average five yards of completion, I guess, one hundred fifty six through the air. That's not good. Um, rushing was our thing, but. In the Big Ten, that's not always going to work. You need to have a threat of the quarterback. You need to have a running threat of the quarterback in the Big Ten if you haven't realized it, unless you're at Michigan, but Ohio State always has that threat. Uh, Michigan State was able to run the ball but also get complimentary, uh, you know, complimentary quarterback play. Iowa, I guess, is the only one that could really run the ball, but what happened to Iowa when they had a hard time rushing the ball? What happened to Iowa when things were going bad? Well, they started to have bad quarterback play, and they started to not really block up front. And Illinois just did that way more often than Iowa. But again, we played Iowa close, only lost by 10. So just bad things, you know, defensively, um, rushing. You know, they gave up 2,165 rush yards. I mean, all together, that's not bad, you know, throughout the whole season. Like I said, defense did pretty good. You only give up 20 points a game. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. So, um like I said, not a failure of a season, uh, not a failure at all. Um, defense was ranked pretty high. You know, when you're giving up 21 points a game, I believe that they were 29th in the nation out of 130, it says. So to me, that's a pretty good, you know, your defense is ranked 29th, really good. Offense, 116 out of 130, not, not, not good. And, so again, I've talked about the struggles. We don't need to beat that dead horse, but it's it's really what has happened. Um, so then, you know, again, the reason why I waited again was to talk about Illinois was what kind of recruits are they going to get? Well, they're getting recruits. You know, there there's some homebred Illinois kids. We got a kid from Oswego East, this linebacker that's going to be a beast. Um, they're getting quarterback, I believe, some wide receivers. I think one for maybe Rochester, Illinois. So they're getting a lot of kids. And like I said, go on and on. They're getting some Illinois kids. Uh, the transfer portal is big. Uh, the quarterback from Syracuse, people are like, well, that's another. Illinois haters or they're Michigan fans or whoever say, well, this could be a bad kid. It's going to be Satowski all over again. Well, no. There was it, Syracuse had a bad year. And this transfer portal, Bielma's going to live in it. you know. And I've talked about the transfer portal. Transfer portal causes, eh, you know, a little bit, but – he's going to play the game and Brent Bielma is going to go into that transfer portal. And, and Brent Bielma was able to keep the whole Illinois team after Lovey Smith left 40 some seniors. It was crazy. He kept everybody only a handful left. That's a recruiter. That's a guy that got people to buy in. So what do you think he's going to do to the transfer portal? He's going to get some kids in. he's going to be able to guys that are going in there and try to tell them, look at what we're doing. Cause Illinois upgraded their facilities. They're going to try to upgrade uh, the stadium. He's a guy that's all in all the time. He is going to try to win football games. Now, where one of the moves here that happened was he fired his offensive coordinator after one year and Tony Peterson. Now, when this originally came out, I was a little bit shocked only because, one, it's been one year. Now, the offense, we've already talked about the struggles on offense, and Brent Bielma even said that he, 
you know, discussed, um, you know, the struggles they had on offense. And that's kind of what he looked at. Now, is the offense the reason why they lost games? Eh, maybe a little bit, but it's a team thing. Um, you know, it was uh, his quote for Brent Bielema was, after my evaluation of our 2021 season, I have decided to make a transition from offensive coordinator Tony Peterson. I would like to thank Tony for his work and commitment to our football program over the past year. Um, and so I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Uh, at the time, I'm talking about at the time. Now I kind of see why, but at the time, you know, they were, you know, according to the, I mean, there's two different articles. They were 115th, 116th out of 130 in FBS and scoring offense, um, 112 in total offense. They had a really good running game under Chase Brown. He was a running back. Um, Another problem maybe Coach Bielema was having with them was that he also coached the quarterbacks. And again, <laughs> excuse me, I'm being a dead horse here. I just cannot continue. The talk of the quarterback play for Illinois, anybody watched, was just god awful. It was freaking awful. I'm an offensive lineman and I'm an offensive line coach. And some of the passes they did not get, I like to think I would make them. You know, I'm 280 pounds, offensive lineman. I'm like, I could throw that three yard hitch. Or, oh, uh, you know, it's, oh, it's third and eight. Well, Throw it to the five out where we have we're third short. Well, why is he running that route? Well, Peterson doesn't want you to throw it there, but you're going to. So that's kind of the struggles there from the quarterback position. And like I said, god awful. Um, he coached quarterbacks really struggling developing the passing game. They ranked 121st in the country in passing offense and 121st in pass efficiency on offense. Um, the and I only had two players catch more than 20 passes. Isaiah Williams, he had 47 for 525 yards and four touchdowns. And Casey Washington, 21 receptions for 294 yards. Like I said, we really didn't have a guy to throw to besides Isaiah Williamson. Casey Washington kind of started to emerge later on in the year. Um, they struggled to consistently get the ball to some of the playmakers. Um, Luke Ford was a disappointment. They didn't get the ball to him enough. Um, Daniel Baker, they didn't get the ball to him enough either. And I don't know if that was offensive play calling. Is it just the lack of the type of players they had? Um, he had a three-year contract, was only there for the one year. Um, you know, and and a quote here before he was fired, he said, and this is where it kind of, you know, you, you start to think about it. I think we can build on a lot of stuff. We ran the ball well. Uh, we threw the ball well at times, protection at times, problems, problem is in major college football is a production deal. You've got to produce. What we're doing right now is we're not scoring enough points. It's obvious. I think everybody knows that. Obviously, they want to score more points. Obviously, we're working to score more points. Our kids are out there giving everything they've got. Starting with me, our offensive staff, and all of our players, I think we're doing a lot of good things, and we're close. But you don't get any trophies for being close, so we got to get out there and get it done on Saturday, you know, and stuff like that. So he has talked about that. Uh, Brent Bielma told an Illinois, the Illinois Inquirer in December about the offense. Offensive football in my career has always been more of an evolution than defense in transition. Defensively, like, oh, let's fix this and we're good. Offensively, bottom line, offense is the stage, whether it's our offense or the offense we're competing against. They decide what personnel goes out there, which then the defense reacts off of. They decide how to line up and the defense reacts off of it. You can have a defense, defensive mentality that's aggressive. I get it. I believe in that altogether. But bottom line is every defense in football, whether it's in the NFL or high school, it's going to align and react off of what the offense decides to do. For that reason, the offense has to learn to be proactive in what they do well. And anytime uh, they say, well, the defense likes to do this, we're going to do that. That's the wrong way to think. The offense has to be the aggressor. Um. So he had that statement, and I get it. Uh, you know, being an offensive coach myself, you look at it, and I mean, I'm guilty of it too. You look at a defense and you say, well, they're doing this. We're going to do this. And I think it depends on the players you have. I think it depends on what you do. He's saying that he want, he's a defensive guy, but he says, let me back up. Nick Saban has adapted so much from an offensive perspective, even a defensive perspective. He understands that defenses not all the time can hold a, per, a team to zero points, to three points. If they do, fantastic. He understands they're going to give up seven to 20 points a game. But if they can be the aggressor on offense and score upwards in the 30s or 40s, that puts their defense still in a good spot. Coach Bielma is, I think, is starting to think the same thing. Yeah, we gave up 20 points this year for being under a first-year new defense, of coordinator, new head coach. 
he understands that. And I think he was, okay, well, we're okay giving up these points, but we've got to be able, okay, we're giving up 20 points. We better score 27. We better score 30, you know, 34. We better score 40. And again, I talked about earlier, the reason why I don't see this as a quite failure is the team did play harder. The team played more aggressively. Um, I saw better coaching, even though the offensive numbers weren't there. I did see better coaching overall than under the Lovey Smith era. Um, there was a swagger to the team. There was a confidence, even though sometimes it wasn't going the right way. And I've got to meet a lot of the Illini coaches in person last summer, which was an awesome experience to meet a lot of those coaches and got to see what they're about. And it was fantastic. And they're coaches that I would love to have on this podcast. I want to talk to every single one of them because they seem like great dudes. They're doing it for the right reason. And that's the type of thing we saw. So I originally saw coach Tony Peterson get fired. And I said, well, wait a minute. You, he's getting fired after one year where, you know, you have some problems, uh, but let's just try to fix it. So then you see this. And some of the things people are talking about is, well, coach Bielma is wasting no time. He, he, he knows this is a rebuild, but he's, he says he's in the business of getting these kids better in the business of getting the program back up into a level that it's never been before. And, you know, so that's why he fired him. And I don't know if they've had disagreements. Uh, maybe he saw what happened through the year. Maybe he saw the 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 direction that it might go in the offseason. He just goes, hey, you know what? This just isn't what I want to do. Um, and he got rid of him. And I was kind of shocked about it because it's one year now. If it's two or three years into this and we're having the exact same problems over and over and over. Yeah, you know, maybe it is time to move on, but it is kind of shocking. And sometimes when this happens, not I think they were friends or they knew each other. It's not necessarily all the time that they got an argument, but when you see this, you start to think maybe they did get an argument. Maybe this did happen. Um, and then in this article, it says, what does it mean? You know, it's showing that he, you know, right here, Brett Bielma is showing that he will, will have patience for struggles in this rebuild. Peterson's offense um, just had a really one good performance when it was 47 to 14 in the last game of the year. Um and most of it was the reason the Illini close losses to Maryland, Purdue, and Rutgers. Three games I kept the Illini from a relative fantastic first year under Brent Bielema. While Bielema seems likely to keep a similar identity on offense, physical pro style, he clearly thinks Pearson was not the one to lead Illinois to long-term success. Now his task is finding a new one, and which he did. Um, he found a new offensive coordinator. Um and we will get to that in just one second. Um, all you football coaches out there, do you guys have a young developing kicker and you want him to get into the end zone? Um, uh, do you want to work on onside kicks and everything else? Well, believe it or not, it is probably the T. It is probably the kickoff T, believe it or not. Um, and I know what you guys are thinking. What do you mean it's the kickoff T? You know, the old school orange ones that just kind of stacks up there. No, that's not what you want. Um, that is, you know, that's not what you want. That's um, it's bad. You know, you want to go to Launchpad Kickoff T. Launchpad Kickoff T is approved for NFHS for high school. Um, it can be used in college. So I mean, it's just everywhere. You know, so it's approved everywhere. It's got flaps on the side where it gives you a strategic option uh, to really focus on kicking it where it needs to go. Um, you know, helps on onside kicks. I guarantee it's going to help your kicker get the ball into the end zone. I guarantee all of this. Launchpad Kickoff T is a game changer. So if you go to launchpadkickofftea.com slash CSS and use the code CSS at checkout when you buy your kickoff tea, um, it's going to save you 15% off your order or 10% off your order, excuse me. Uh, and then if you buy the two, you're going to save even more money. Then they also have a four pack. Um, so when you buy the four pack and you use that code, um, it's going to save you upwards. You'll get the fourth one free. So when you buy the four pack, you get by the third one, you get the fourth one free. So launchpadkickofftea.com slash CSS and use code CSS at checkout. You're going to save 10%, 20%, or buy three, get the fourth one free. It's an absolute game changer. Thank you, Launchpad, for sponsoring the podcast. The podcast is also brought to you by Coach Stone Football and his Back to the Basics Books and Drills. Uh, his very first book is over five, 600 pages of drills, which, which is insane. Uh, he has a whole series, uh, offense, defense, practice, planning, game planning, uh, strength and conditioning, and these drills can be used at the youth level, the high school level, and even the college level. Um, so thank you, Coach Stone, for sponsoring the podcast. Again, go to CoachStoneFootball.com and check out all the books. There's tons of them. Thank you, Coach Stone. Uh, please go do that for me. Again, CoachStoneFootball.com. Okay, so then Illinois 
Brent Bielma fired Tony Peterson, which again, kind of a shocker for me. But then once you start looking at it, you start to understand why he's not waiting around. So something happened. He just didn't like the way it was working. And that's happened sometimes when you don't work with somebody. Um, you know, maybe they just didn't align right. Probably good. They probably still kind of like each other because it's just a business. But again, sometimes after one year, you kind of go one year. Um, so he, he goes on and hires a new offensive coordinator. And the reason why I wanted you guys to uh, kind of remember the schedule, he goes and hires the offensive coordinator from UTSA. Hires the offensive coordinator from UTSA. That's what I wanted you guys to pay attention to. Um, Barry Lunny, Lunny, which I hope I say his name right, Jr. He's been named the team's offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach after serving a role the past two seasons of UTSA. He replaces Tony Peterson, who was let go just after one year. So when we look at UTSA real quick, before we dive into who um, Coach Lunny Jr. is, Again, UTSA had a fantastic season. Okay, fantastic season. They were undefeated at one point. I think they only lost one game. Um, so when we look at the story, you know, he hires them. Now, they used to work together. He was the tight ends coach at Arkansas with Coach Bielma. So here is, you know, a similar um, they have familiarity with each other. Uh, the quote from Coach Bielma is, I'm so excited to bring Barry Loney to the University of Illinois family, put him in a position to lead our offense. He has had success at every level he has coached and has a system that will help take our offense to a new level. Uh, he comes from UTSA where he served as the associate head coach, offense coordinator, quarterbacks coach. They have the 11th ranked offense in the entire nation. Um, he worked under Bielma previously uh, at Arkansas and coached tight ends there for five years, and that is his alma mater. So he went to Arkansas, served as the tight ends coach there for Brent Bielma, which was fantastic. Um, again, they talked about being the, you know, depends on what you look at. So they, they scored 36.9 points a game. They were 11th in the country of 130. Um, I mean, just overall, the team was great at UTSA, but – to, to, to be the 11th, 12th in the nation, scoring 36.9 points. We're only scoring 20, and you heard the numbers. We were almost last in almost a lot of offensive categories. And so, to, I mean, that is fantastic. Now, at the same time, UTSA had some dudes. We watched them play Illinois, and Illinois could not stop them. They scored 37 points. And that was where, before Illinois kind of made the adjustment that they were going to make for their defense. So we hire him. Now, I like Coach Beal. I've never, you know, have not had him on the podcast. If anybody can help me get Coach Beal on the podcast, I would absolutely love it. But I guess a part of the job that I've self-appointed myself when you do a podcast or anything is, are we? What kind of changes are we going to see on offense? So when you look at UTSA. They, they were spread team. They're going to run the ball. Sometimes I think they did go under center and really attack and run the ball at people. Maybe maybe this all came down to the development of the quarterbacks, and they saw how good the UTSA quarterback was playing. Again, though, I, my, my thing is you got to look at the players still. Do we have a playmaker to go to? Yeah, we had Isaiah Williamson, but again – Third and 10, are you going to throw him up the ball? And no offense to him, he's a little shorter. Is a safety or corner going to go over the top of him? Are they going to do this? Maybe. But you have to understand that we're still going to have some of these players until we get some recruits in. Now, I like the aggressiveness of Coach Bielma. He's like, I ain't wasting time. And I'm sh I hope it wasn't personal between him and Coach Peterson. But he is just hitting the ground running. And he's like, I want to win now. Because this, again, is a guy that doesn't lose. He doesn't lose. I mean, he... Played Iowa. Iowa doesn't really lose. He coached there. And then when he got to Wisconsin, they just, they were winning, man. They were winning. Arkansas, they had some rough years. And I'm sure that bothers him. He just does He's a guy that just is like, I don't really lose. Like, yeah, I have some bad seasons at Arkansas. And I think, again, they said in the article, the frustration a little bit was Maryland, Purdue, um, Rutgers, you know, now those other teams did what they had to do on defense. But again, watching those games personally, it was 
sometimes like the Bears, run, 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 pass, you know. So maybe that was a part of it too. Coach Bielma didn't like play calling, but that needs to be addressed during the season. And maybe it was. And Coach Peterson was like, well, we're going to do this. We're going to do X, Y, and Z. Um, you know, and all that stuff. So maybe he just didn't really like it. Um, I, I have no idea. Again, those are internal stuff that Coach Bielma is pretty good at keeping internal that we don't really need to know. It's just us to, to, to look at and speculate on what was happening. And that's fine. You know, he hired him and he, you know, maybe Coach Pearson, you know, sent his ways after doing this 20 to 30 years. Didn't like the way the play call was happening. Didn't like the production offense, maybe he had higher expectations. And again, maybe things were said to each other, maybe the evaluation, if he said, okay, what's going to change? And maybe stuff wasn't going to change enough. Who knows? Maybe Because he and coach, you know, they coached together, him and coach uh, Lonnie Jr. Maybe they talked and he goes, I want to get to a bigger school. And so that kind of happens too, where you know somebody, maybe you trust them a little more and say, okay, we got to get there. Because they got a staff. Illinois has got a staff in place. I think Bielma is going to be is the right guy. Offense coordinator here is going to be a little different, but like Coach Miller, good on offense. The defensive guys, you saw how good they did. So they have a good staff set up. It, it's going to be fine. And the schedule next year, it's set up at the beginning to kind of you know get the ball rolling, and then we get into the meat grinder. Um, so we like the aggressiveness of Coach Brent Bielma. We like where it's going. Um, again, kind of looking at that offensive coordinator fire and being like, eh, I think he just wanted to bring a guy in that he knew and exactly what was going. He's probably watching it from afar and saying, man, look what they did on offense. He's probably watching it. I like what they did on offense. Why can't we do that? Maybe coach Peterson says, maybe we can't do it. And coach Miller thinks they can. Those conversations have always happened, even with me and other coaches, head coaches, offense coordinators that has happened. So those are not uncommon. So I think Illinois is moving in a good direction. Overall, you know, looking at this review, kind of looking forward, um, the recruiting class isn't bad. We're going to see, I think, hopefully a more explosive offense after this year. You're going to see the defense take another step forward and really work in there. They're going to play harder. We've already seen that. Overall, the season was not a failure. Yes, it's frustrating because some of these games that's, you know, now if we got blown out by these other teams, scoring 40 points and everything like that, it'd be a little different. But we were very close to getting to – seven, eight wins and making a bowl game. But you like the aggressiveness of, oh, the bowl game was open. He wanted to get the team to a bowl game. He wanted to get there. So, yeah, you know, it it is what it is. Um, I think Illinois is moving in the right direction. It it looks way better, and and the feel is different than it was with Lovey Smith. So they are moving in the right direction. I do think that you're going to see here in a couple years, Illinois, I'm not saying because it's really hard to really – fathom this, that they're going to come in and win the Big Ten. But I could foresee them being a team. Man, you know what? Yeah, maybe they've lost three games this year or four games this year. But they could be that team. Like, again, they beat Penn State when they probably weren't supposed to in nine overtimes. I could foresee the way Bielma's going forward of, like, I ain't wasting time. I want to win. That they could be that team that puts pressure on people. Does that make sense? So you're playing a team that Illinois be that team you just don't want to play. You're on a roll, kind of like what Illinois did to Ohio State way back in 2007. Ohio State was number one in the nation. Something like that in the Ron Zook times where they're going to be a team they're not supposed to. Maybe two teams that year they're not supposed to. I'm not saying – because they got a little while before they get up to the Michigan level and the Ohio State level. And, you know, they don't play Ohio State in the regular season, so so thank God. Um, But the way it was going, it's in the right direction. I do like the higher – of Coach Lonnie Jr. as the offensive coordinator again. I didn't think Coach Tony Peterson did a bad job for what they had. But again, we're not in those meetings. We're not in behind the scenes. So we never really know what's going on, even what they say in the reports. Um, so Illinois season overall, good year. Five and seven, you know, to some people that's a complete failure. From what we saw with Lovey Smith, this is completely different. Going five and seven with Lovey Smith felt like the, a death sentence of, oh my God, next year we're going to get two wins. I don't see that. I think he's going to be able to coach them to get us even more wins next year. Hopefully next year we get to that bowl game. Again, bowl games are not pointless because for us sitting here saying as Illinois fans, we look to the bowl game. It's not pointless. Um, so Illinois, not a bad season. Uh, kind of where everybody probably thought it was going to be. Um, moving forward, I think they're going to do much better next year as long as they get some recruits, some playmakers, better quarterback play. Um, offensive line play I thought was good this year. You know, you can blame them if you want, but being an offensive line guy myself, it's not. Um, but that wraps up the show. Um, thank you guys so much. I was live here. So thank anybody that watched. Thank anybody on ColorCast that was a part of it. Um, again, go hit the like button on the Coach Steve Show YouTube channel. Subscribe to it. 
Find the podcast wherever you listen to your podcast. It's literally everywhere. Uh, follow it, rate it, be a friend, tell a friend. Um, if you have color cast, it's only on Apple. Uh, please follow the Coach Steve Show. Going to try to do live podcasts and everything, um, different hot takes. Uh, I think my best hot take was a LeBron James one where he's not better than Michael Jordan. That was, that was really good. Um, but go do all that for me. Uh, check out all the affiliates in the description below on the Coach Steve Show uh, YouTube channel. Um, thank you, Jerome uh, Botang. I hope I said your name right. Georgia Tech fan here. Uh, so you feel my pain. I'm an Illinois fan. You're a Georgia Tech fan. Hopefully you feel my pain. Uh, great show. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for being here. Uh, please follow everything. Uh, please subscribe to everything. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, this has been another episode of the Coach Steve Show podcast. Check out the weekly episodes. Thank you guys so much for listening. This is Coach Steve, and we are out of here.